everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In today's video, we'll be jumping into another character analysis video and we'll be tackling one of the first major characters that we've done from the books, Nynaeve Almira. Not only is Nynaeve the first major character that we're going to tackle, but she's also my favorite character in the series. Now, as she is a major character with tons of information to dive into, Let's jump right in. Quick shout out to audible.com for sponsoring the video, but more on them later. This video will carry a spoiler rating of red, meaning it will contain major spoilers all the way through A Memory of Light. So if you have not finished the series, please watch this video at your own risk. Stuff is gonna get spoiled for you. You've been warned. So as with all of my character analysis videos, we're gonna be breaking down Nynaeve's character into 10 separate sections to kind of sort of organize my thoughts on the character. The sections are as follows. History before the story, actions during the story, appearance, personality, special abilities, notable possessions, relationships, greatest moments, what happens after the story, and then I'll do an overall role in the story and her impact as well. And then lastly, I'll just kind of tack this one on. I'm going to give my thoughts overall on Nynaeve's character. Uh, and then briefly mention what we know so far about the Amazon Studios adaptation for Nynaeve's character. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. Nynaeve Almira was born on a farm near Emmons Field in 974 of the New Age, roughly 24 years prior to the start of the story. Her father raised sheep and grew tobacco, and her mother worked on the farm as well. Early in her life, Nynaeve's mother died, leaving her to live with just her father. Now, her father raised her like he would have a son, teaching her to track and stalk game, as well as trapping and fishing. When Nynaeve was 14 years old, her father died as well, and she was apprenticed to Doral Baran, the wisdom of Emmonsfield at the time. Mistress Baran's previous apprentice died from what seemed to be an unknown illness at the time, but was later discovered to be channeling sickness from channeling without training. While apprenticing under Mistress Baran, Nynaeve showed exceptional skill with healing and herbs, often assisting in nursing people back to health from their deathbed, even when Mistress Baran thought they were lost causes. Nynaeve manifests her ability to channel when she cures Egwene Alvere of breakbone fever, not truly knowing that she channeled. Nynaeve also excelled at predicting the weather, something that all wisdoms claimed the ability to do, but very few could actually do that because of the connection to the One Power. In 993 of the New Age, after five years of apprenticing under the former wisdom, Mistress Baran passed away of old age, and at the age of 19, Nynaeve became the new wisdom of Edmunds Field. For the next five years, Nynaeve was forced to deal with a village that believed her too young to be wisdom. She develops a sharp tongue and a reputation for being quite strict with the villagers, and this is basically her trying to compensate for her, their lack of belief in her. She serves as the wisdom until the start of the story. So for this section, I'm going to try to summarize as much as I can. Nynaeve is a major, major character. So if I list out every little thing that she does, this video will be two hours long. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to it. As the story begins, Nynaeve is serving as the wisdom of Emmons Field. Now she's a part of discussions with the Women's Circle and the Village Council that surround the conflicts in Gildon uh, around the false dragon Logana Blar. This news has been brought by Pod and Fane, the peddler who we later find out brought Trollocs to the Two Rivers. Now that evening, on winter night, the village is attacked by Trollocs. In the aftermath of the attack, Nynaeve tends to the wounded, serving as the wisdom. When Bran brings his father Tam to her, she is unable to do anything for him, prompting Rand to ask Moraine to heal Tam. Nynaeve follows Rand, Matt, Perrin, and Egwene, and then Moraine and Lan as they depart the two rivers after the events of Winter Night. She tracks them all the way to Berlon, where she catches up and attempts to bring the boys and Egwene home, only to be convinced to continue with them by Moraine, and eventually, she's convinced to learn to channel once she discovers that she can use the One Power. When the party is split up at Shadar Logoth, she ends up with Moraine and Lan, and the first seeds of the romance between Lan and, and Nynaeve begin to take hold. But Nynaeve continues to have great animosity towards Moraine. Nynaeve helps to rescue Egwene and Perrin from the White Cloaks, and then she goes with that group as they arrive in Camelin to find Rand and Matt. They stay together through the ways and into the Blight as they continue on to the Eye of the World, Nynaeve is present when Moraine reveals to Rand that he can channel, and she agrees to keep it secret from the other boys. Nynaeve is in Faldara when the Horn of Valir is stolen, and she makes her way to Tarvalin with Egwene. Once there, she's raised to accept it on her first day in Tarvalin, but continues to be unable to channel unless she's furious. After some time in the tower, Leandrin takes Nynaeve, Egwene, Elaine, and Min to Tomon Head under the guise of going to help Rand. In reality, she's turning them over to the Shan Chan, and Leandrin is actually Black Aja. Nynaeve and Elaine are able to escape the Shan Chan, but Egwene is captured. 
Now, Knight even Elaine managed to rescue Egwene from the Shan Chan, but they're caught between the Shan Chan army and the White Cloaks when Matt sounds the Horn of Valyr and the Heroes of the Horn appear and defeat the Shan Chan. In the aftermath of the Battle of Falma, Nynaeve returns to the White Tower with Varen, Egwene, Elaine, Huron, and Matt, who is dying from his exposure to the Shadar Logoth dagger. She resumes her training in the tower, but is set to the task of hunting the Black Aja by the Amarlin seat, Swan Sanche. She, Egwene, and Elaine hunt the Black Aja sisters, and their search again takes them away from the White Tower and on a trek to Tyr. Along the river on the way to Tyr, they heal and befriend some Aiel Maidens of the Spear, one of which is Avienda, and they are later rescued by those same Aiel when they are captured by Dark Friends. Eventually they make their way to Tyr and are captured by the Black Aja sisters, again, and they're held as bait to capture Rand in the Stone of Tyr. Now Matt rescues them from the stone, and they stay in the stone after Rand and the Aiel conquer it. Nynaeve, Elaine, and Egwene interrogate the Black Aja sisters that they captured, but they're unsure of what their next course of action should be to take the next step in their search. Egwene leaves them to go to the Waste to learn how to be a Dreamwalker, so Elaine and Nynaeve go to Tanchico with Tom and Julian Sandar. They are chased by the Black Aja sisters there. They're able to discover that the Black Aja are seeking something to control Rand with, and they break into the Panarch's palace to stop them. While inside, Nynaeve is confronted by Magidian and is able to match her blow for blow with the One Power. Nynaeve is actually eventually able to shield her, but Magidian escapes when one of the Black Aja sisters fires Balefire at Nynaeve. Now this begins the major source of animosity from Magidian towards Nynaeve, which you'll see continue on. Nynaeve leaves Tanchico with Elaine, Tom, and Julian as the head east towards Amadisia. They have learned of the split in the White Tower and of the deposing of Swan Sanche. They also discovered that there is a standing order to have them brought to Elida, so they travel with Valen Lucas traveling show for cover, basically taking jobs in the circus. Eventually, they leave the show and take a ship to Saladar, where they join the rebel Aes Sedai. They resume their training, but also train the Aes Sedai there in the use of the World of Dreams. While in the World of Dreams, Nynaeve is attacked by Mal Gideon, but Birgitta saves her. But at the expense of Birgitta being ripped out of the World of Dreams by Mal Gideon. Nynaeve is again attacked by Mal Gideon later, but this time she manages to get an Idom collar onto Mal Gideon and controls her. They end up traveling to Camelin, where she uses Mogideon to burn Ravine with fire while he battled Rand. When she arrives back in Saladar, she captures Mogideon in the real world and uses the Idom to learn weaves and information from Age of Legends. Later in Saladar, Nynaeve heals Loghain accidentally, and then later Swan and Lyanna. All three have lost the ability to channel from Stilling, and she was the first person to ever heal this. Egwene Alvir is later raised to Amarlin's seat, and she raises Nynaeve and Elaine to full Aes Sedai, and sends them off to Ebudar in search of the Bull of the Winds. Matt goes along with them, and eventually they discovered the bull to be in a cache of objects of the power that the kin had kept in the Rahad. Nynaeve inadvertently discovered the kin while in Ebudar, as they did not believe that she was an Aes Sedai. Eventually, while in Ebudar, Nynaeve breaks her block after Megidian again tries to kill her, and then she's reunited with Lan, and then they marry. After defeating the Black Aja and surviving the Golom, they find the Bull of the Winds, as well as a bunch of other objects of power in that cache, including a Paralysis net which Nynaeve keeps for herself. That's a group of Angriol and Terangriol that look like jewelry that give her a number of additional abilities with the power. We'll talk more about that later on in the Notable Possessions section. They take the Bull to the Kin's farm not far from Ebudar, just before the Shan Chan invade the city. They use the Bull of the Winds there with the aid of the Seafolk Windfinders, who they made a deal with back in Ebudar. Because of the Shan Chan attack, they are forced to flee through Gateway into Andor. All of the kin at the farm, the Windfinders, and the Aes Sedai all follow them to Andor, and then they move into Camelin, where Elaine begins her claim on the throne. Eventually, Rand comes to Camelin and asks Nynaeve to come with him as he needs her help to cleanse Sidene. She agrees, and they first travel to Far Matting, where Rand wants to kill a few renegade Ashaman. When Rand is captured there, Nynaeve helps Cad Swain secure Rand's release from the councils that rule Far Matting, and then their group travels to just outside Shadar Logoth, where Nynaeve and Rand link and Rand cleanses Sidene with the Choden Call. After the cleansing is completed, they both rest at Lord Algarin's manor in Tyr. Sometime later, a force of Trollocs attacks the manor, and they are destroyed by the Ashaman, Aes Sedai, Rand, the Saldean soldiers, but Nynaeve ends up healing a lot of the soldiers. In the aftermath of this, Lan tells her that he is frustrated that Rand is ignoring the Borderlands, so she takes him to World's End in Saldea and makes him promise that he will accept anybody that wants to ride with him as he makes his march toward Tarwin's Gap and the Blight. She agrees, and she travels in front of him, letting people know that he's coming and rallying people to join him. Nynaeve later accompanies Rand at his meeting with the fake daughter of the Nine Moons, actually Simrog in disguise, 
She heals him when he loses his hand, and she stays at his side as he moves into Ara Doman and its capital, Bandar Eban. Nynaeve helps to track down Grendel by learning to unravel compulsion, and she travels with Rand to meet Tuon as he actually meets the Daughter of the Nine Moons. They leave that without agreement, and she moves with Rand as he tracks down Grendel's lair. She confirms, or at least she and Rand think that she confirms, that Grendel was at Natrum's Barrow by sending in somebody and then seeing if compulsion was put back on that person as they returned. Rand bail fires the entire building, and the compulsion disappears, making them think Grendel was destroyed. This absolutely horrifies Nynaeve, and then she goes to Cadswain to get help in dealing with Rand. Cadswain uses Nynaeve to track down where Tam Althor is, and bring him to Tyr to meet with Rand. Rand almost kills Tam, and then he travels off to Ebudar, and eventually has his reckoning on Dragonmount, but when he returns to Tyr, he's very changed, and he informs Nynaeve that Egwene has reunited the White Tower. Egwene calls Nynaeve back to the White Tower, and she is raised to full Aes Sedai, and takes Lan as her warder for good. She is present at the Fields of Merilor at the meeting of all the armies and peoples of the Westlands as they prepare for the last battle, and she has a very tender moment here with Moraine, when Maureen returns, uh, and that is really symbolizing coming full circle in that relationship. Nynaeve accompanies Rand to Sheol Ghul along with Moraine, and they link with him as he seals the boar. During Rand's battle with the Dark One, Nynaeve heals Alana, who holds Rand's bond and is dying next to him. Now, she's unable to use the One Power, so she uses her expertise with herbs. She's able to revive Alana long enough for Alana to release Rand's bond before her death, keeping Rand sane so he could fight the last battle. Nynaeve attempts to heal Rand after the completion of the last battle, but he dies anyway, and she's unaware that Rand actually switched bodies with Moradin. So, woo! That's a lot, and I think I skipped like half the things she did. If you really want to fill in the details, and there are a ton of details, the best way to do that is to read the books. Which brings me to the channel sponsor, Audible.com. One of my favorite ways to experience the Wheel of Time is through audiobook, and the best place to get those is on Audible.com. They are the world's largest depository of audiobooks, and they have a super cheap way of getting you a new audiobook every month for a very low price. The even better news is that because you're a viewer of mine, they're going to give you a free audiobook that you can keep regardless of whether you keep their subscription or not. All you have to do is head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Naveless and sign up and you'll get a book for free that you can keep no matter what. Pick up the eye of the world and let me know what you think. So back to the video. Nynaeve is very slender and short, around five foot four. She has very long, dark hair that's usually worn in one long braid in the Two Rivers fashion. Nynaeve tends to pull on that braid, yanking it when she has anxiety or when she's really angry, something that people have made into a meme. Nynaeve has deep, dark brown eyes and is considered by most to be very beautiful. Although she's around 24 years old at the start of the story, she tends to look about 19 to 20. This is due to the fact that her age started slowing down because of her strong ability to channel although she doesn't know this, and really a lot of the people in the Two Rivers don't know that. She just looks young. In regards to dress, at the beginning of the series, Nynaeve favors stout Two Rivers wool dresses, but as the series goes on and she's exposed to silk, she begins to wear exclusively silk dresses, while berating everyone else for their choice of clothing, in typical Nynaeve fashion. She tends to wear dresses that are blue or green, and be mainly because those are Land's favorite colors. So Nynaeve certainly has a very interesting personality. On one hand, she is very much a caretaker. Her primary motivations through the series remain consistent, and that is to protect people, especially the ones that she loves. Her entire arc starts with her quest to protect the people from her village, and this really never changes as she ends up with, with Rand at Sheogul in the last battle. She cares for people more than position, and believes that she will do what's best for people regardless of the cost. On the other hand, however, she is very hostile and sharp with people. She can be abrasive and self-righteous. She often practices do as I say, not as I do. That mentality, I guess, with people. And she's very judgmental of others for doing the exact things that she does herself. Her primary leadership style tends to be bullying. And she has a very prominent temper. What makes Nynaeve's personality so great, though, is the changes that happen throughout the story. We'll talk more about this in a moment. But by the end of the series, Nynaeve comes to terms with her own insecurities and that makes her far more loving, and you see the caretaker side of her come to the forefront. What I love so much here is that because of her youth and the feeling of the need to prove herself to the village as a wisdom, she puts up a front about her own perfection, believing that she needs to be perfect to win people over. She can't let people see her faults, but she knows that she has them, 
and she feels great internal struggle over those perceived faults. For instance, believing that she's a coward internally while simultaneously performing very heroic acts. By the end of the story, she has come to terms with her own faults. She no longer feels the same insecurities, freeing her to be a confident defender of those that she cares about. It's really a fun change and one of the reasons that she's my favorite character. Nynaeve is one of the most powerful female channelers alive. The strongest Aes Sedai at the end of the story. She has a power level of 3 from Robert Jordan's guide, putting her just below the top female channelers and even above some of the Forsaken. Nynaeve has an especially strong talent for healing. She's one of the best healers alive in the story and she's self-taught. She's able to heal stilling, remove compulsion, and even cure the madness from the taint on Sidene. Nynaeve is somewhat skilled in the world of dreams through much practice with the Terangrial, but she's not a dreamwalker and cannot enter on her own as a dreamwalker. She possesses a strong talent for predicting storms, both actual storms and metaphysical storms. Uh, she can feel danger or big events that are coming in the near future. Nynaeve is one of the few people in the world that is born with the spark to channel the one power. Whether she was taught or not, she would have learned to channel. She has learned to channel and survived the process, something that isn't common. This gave her a block against channeling unless she was really angry, but she was later able to overcome that block. Nynaeve's most notable possessions are really comprised of the Paralysis Net that I mentioned earlier. A Paralysis Net is a grouping of Terangrial and Angrial that were created in the Age of Legends that give the user a number of additional abilities. Nynaeve possessed as a part of her Paralysis Net a very strong Angrial, a well that allowed her to pool extra Sidar that she could use even when she was cut off from the source, a Terangrial that detected channeling, another that created a physical shield around her that would protect her from physical blows, and yet another that worked in a similar way to Matt's Foxhead Terangrial, and it stopped flows of the One Power weaved at her. At one point, she was also in possession of the IDOM that she used to control Mogidian, and the female Chodian Call access key, although that melted after it was used to cleanse Sidene. Nynaeve is very much a relationship-driven character, so I want to get into some of these. The first relationship that we're going to examine here is Egwene. Now this is an interesting dynamic that changes over time in the books. Egwene starts off as the apprentice to Nynaeve and is very much subservient to her in many ways due to her position as wisdom. As Egwene grows in power and in confidence, she begins to slowly mature and assert some authority back on Nynaeve, a dynamic that Nynaeve feels and one to which she responds very poorly. Nynaeve and Egwene bicker and fight for a good period of time in the story, Nynaeve digging her heels in to fight Egwene even when Egwene is right about something. But later, through the maturing of Nynaeve's character and with her growth to move past some of her own insecurities, she later turns the tables again on Egwene. As she's being raised to full Aes Sedai and taking the test, she respects Egwene's authority as Amerlin, but she basically tells the Aes Sedai and Egwene that if turning her back on people is what's required to be an Aes Sedai, then she's not going to be an Aes Sedai. This is a moment of supreme confidence and one where she forces respect out of Egwene, and frankly, this is one of my favorite moments in the series. Another major relationship for her is basically with the rest of the Emmons Fielders. She really maintains her watch over them throughout the story. She isn't always nice or pleasant to them, but all of her actions throughout the entire story are based around helping those that she cares about. She shows great courage to defend them, even when she doesn't recognize it as courage. And as I mentioned before, these are the relationships that stay important to her throughout the story. The last relationship I want to look at is that with Lan. I actually think this is one of the better fleshed out uh, romantic relationships in The Wheel of Time, and one that actually feels more real to me, despite the fact that Lan is close to 25 years older than Nynaeve. The relationship develops at the beginning out of mutual respect. Lan notices the tracking skills that Nynaeve possesses, Nynaeve was raised by her father and by all accounts was much more tomboyish in her youth, but turning more into a typical woman of the time as she aged. Lan appreciated the skills that she had, not just her beauty. This mutual respect grows and Nynaeve and Lan try to stay apart. Uh, Lan basically tries to keep her away so he won't end up hurting her, but in the end, they are together and it seems like he seems like the perfect man to understand her and give her strength, just as she gives him a reason to live beyond wanting to avenge his dead homeland. Admittedly, it's not perfect, and I, as I'd said before, the weakest point of Robert Jordan's writing, in my opinion, is his romantic relationships, but I do feel like this is probably one of the better ones in the series.
And Eve has so many great moments throughout the series. Her role in the story is honestly packed with them, but I'll narrow it down to just a few here. One of the first big moments is the fight against Ma Gideon in the Panarch's palace in the Shadow Rising. She's terrified, but she finds that she is the Forsaken's equal. This is one of the first of many badass moments out of Nynaeve. The second big moment is when she heals Loghain and then eventually Swan and Lyanna. I loved this scene, especially because she refused to give up on something that everybody told her wasn't possible. It's a big moment for her confidence as well, because this discovery was hers and not from Mogidian. The third big moment to me is when she takes Lan to World's End on his trek to Tarwin's Gap. When she begins to rally former Malkiri as she travels ahead of him, you really can't help but get the feels, as she says. I mean, and I quote, Lan told me once that Malkir lives as long as one man wears the Hadori in the pledge that he will fight the Shadow, so long as one woman wears the Kaisain in the pledge that she will send her sons to fight the Shadow. I wear the Kaisain. Master Eldragoran, my husband wears the Hadori. So do you. Will Landman Dragoran ride to the last battle alone? The scene literally gives me chills every time, especially when it's read by Michael Kramer in the audiobook. Seriously, check that out, people. My last moment I already mentioned that I really enjoy is her Aes Sedai testing and her realization that she cares about people more than simply becoming an Aes Sedai. She becomes the new consciousness of the Aes Sedai, basically. Coming back to being an actual servant of all, not just a servant of the Aes Sedai's best interest. I love that growth for her character. So Nynaeve is married to the King of Malkir, which has been reborn. She's the Queen of Malkir, the most powerful female Aes Sedai remaining alive, and the woman who helped cleanse Sidene, sealed the Dark One's prison. Obviously, she's going to be one of the most revered women of the Fourth Age. And if she ever removes the Three Oaths when she retires from being an Aes Sedai, she should live for around 700 years into the Fourth Age. I would imagine that Nynaeve will be instrumental in shaping the new world after the last battle. So Nynaeve is, in my opinion, the best written character in the series. She has an arc that shows her changing dramatically as she accepts herself, and her inner confidence actually grows. But she's the one character that doesn't really change at all throughout the story. She never moves from caring about those close to her and protecting them. She's believable and real. She struggles and has weaknesses despite having incredible power. She's very well written, one of the best characters in fantasy literature in my opinion, despite not always being likable. If you didn't see that your first couple times reading, I challenge you on your next reread to think deep about Nynaeve. I think you'll see how deep and awesome a character she actually is. Let me quickly hit on the upcoming Wheel of Time television series being produced by Amazon Studios. Nynaeve will obviously be in the story, and Zoe Robbins has been cast as Nynaeve for the show. Zoe is probably most known for her work on Power Rangers. I did a more in-depth video on the casting that I'll have linked in the description. At this point in the production, we don't know how much of Nynaeve's story will be a part of the show, and whether or not her role will be reduced or expanded. But since Nynaeve is such a large part of the story, it's hard seeing them reducing her role in any significant amount. So what do you all think of Nynaeve? Where does she rank in your list of top characters from the series? Is there anything that I missed? Let me know in the comments below and make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release new Wheel of Time content. Make sure to check out the Patreon if you want to see more videos like this and you want to support what I'm doing here. Thank you to everybody who already supports me there. I'll have the link for the Patreon in the description below along with that Audible trial link if you want your free audiobook. Hey everybody, thanks for watching and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?